when you think now of this final tournament game, it should be interesting to see if the tournament takes on a whole different look next year because we've talked before in other games it's going to have to take on a different look. Here comes White as Joyner. He should tie it. Sean prancing up the floor. He'll get it up top to the captain, Brian Joyner. Sean White inside. Rodney Reeves, Jim. yes! Looking for a bucket here. They need one desperately. Oh my. Here comes Joyner. Brian to the hole. Yes. Claymont by This Jim place Morgan is rocking right now, Steve. The Claymont fans have come alive. Look for a timeout. Near steal by Claymont. Yarborough getting off, off, up off the CR bench. He still has four personals. But Marshall Emery wants him in the ball. They are stopping. They're thinking they're hearing whistles. It's just the fans reacting, and they're holding up right now. It's slowing them down. Mick Johns inside. Good foul, Couldn't get Good the foul. hoop, and a foul against Playmont. Johns will be shooting two. You know, how many times have we seen in a tournament where all of a sudden the team plays good delivered offense, and then their guards start firing them up from the outside? Right now, Charlie Johns is taking, Jones is taking two, four shots from the outside, and Claymont's come down and cashed in on both of them, and... That's not how CR got their lead, and I'm sure that's what Marshall's telling him right now. John's 0 for 1, thus far in the free throw line. It was a good foul there down here that time. They had an easy layup. They had to take the foul and sit again in the easy two-point bucket. Don't forget, CR has not been in a close game in the first three nights of the tournament. There's Marshall with the towel draped around his neck, getting the cards up, getting back to the CR defense after the free throw. Mick Johns can tie it. And the foul did pay off. Steal by Yarborough, just back in the game to the hole. 43-42, CR back on top. Steve, we have it going again. This is going to be our fourth straight great <laughs> tournament game. Just getting ready to say, Angie, here we go again. We'll jump it up. Oh, That's travel. a travel. Wilmington 50-49, and then Jennings with the bomb against Concord on Thursday. Nearing the five-minute mark, jam-packed Delaware Fieldhouse, CR, in the blue with the gold trim, Claymont in the white. Yarborough on the baseline, knocked out of bounds by Billy Johnson. Billy's got to be careful. He has four personal fouls. Rodney Reeves has three. Steve Jennings with three. Yarbrough, the only man in foul trouble right now for Susan Rodney. He has four. Here he is, 32. No fire from 10. At this time, Reeves tips it up to Sean White. Letting him play right now, too, and I think Clay must be a little bit more physical and aggressive than the CR kids, and it's working to their advantage right now. Johnson, they'll go baseline. Number 24. 24. That's Mick Johns. Mick Johns with his second. Third signal to the bench, Steve. Tom Coder, the official statistician here today. He's done a lot of state championship games. That's Mick Johns, 24. John Bossett going over to the scorer's table. Billy Johnson with this four. This is third. It's Johns third. Okay, we get the correction now. Three fouls on Johns. seen it as when one player turns to another and tries to taunt him or say something to him and comes back to haunt him and they don't hit the shot. You've been talking about poor free throw shooting. Claymont shooting 50% on the season from the line. Unbelievable team in the field house shooting that kind of percentage yeah, we, we on the free throw line. We just have not seen good foul shooting through the course of this whole week, I don't think. 440 left in the 84 state title. Matter of fact, if you look at the stats from the other night, Concord lost the ball game from the foul line. Raiders having all kinds of trouble, especially in the last minute and a half. Saunders, Black, and Ken Reynolds with opportunities to win it for Concord just couldn't do it. 
23 left. 43-43, we are tied. Steve Hood playing a great game for CR, continues his work as Ramos went in. with the rejection right there. John Vassick calling him with a little bit of the body coming underneath. Yeah, that would have had to have been a call because he had it all the ball. It looked like he did get him with the body when he came down. Reeves now at four. The class president. John's on the free throw line. There was another example, Steve, of Caesar Rodney pounding the boards. And they're getting back into their game a little bit right now. Claymont took the lead, but Caesar Rodney, being the disciplined team that they are, st stood firm. And now they've gone back in the lead by one with 4.14 left. Mick Johns, two of five tonight on the free throw line. CR now with three-quarter court pressure. Here's Sean White. Sean on the drive. Didn't want that kind of shot as Yarbrough goes up and over the backboard support here at uh, Delaware Fieldhouse. Claymont will have the basketball under their own bucket. Sean was just completely out of control on that play, and Tom Stefano was yelling over to him to calm down, take it easy a little bit. But you got to remember, we're talking about 17 and 18 year old kids in a packed house, and things like that are going to happen. Man. Tough shot by Joyner. Here's Reeves, Reeves no. And Nick Johns with a strong board and a foul on Johnson. Johnson. He's gone. And you notice the CR players aren't waving goodbye to him. <laughs> Johnson has to sit down, and I would imagine we're going to see Tommy Monday for Claymont. And I don't think he ever was really the factor, Angel. The last two games we had Claymont that you said Billy Johnson had been when you had done an earlier broadcast. He's a fine offensive player, and I know he's very frustrated right now. He looks up at the clock, and he knows it's a ball game, and he knows he can be a big factor if he were in there, but that was a great young man. He had a good season, and he has nothing to be ashamed of right now. Billy Johnson finishing his state tournament work with five points here in the championship game. Nick Johns, two of five on the line. That's a big one. 45-43. We still have all kinds of time left here. 356. Johns gets a pair. Odd numbers. CR by three. Yarborough, good opportunity. Jumps right out in her full court pressure and caught Claymont completely flat-footed. And since Harold Yarbrough has come back in the game, Steve, he's turned it around for the Riders. Good job out front by Steve Hood. Hood, the foul on Joyner. Brian will be shooting one and one. All of a sudden, we have a five-point differential now. And that, that steal right there by Yarbrough completely turns the tide to the Riders' side. Two fouls on Steve Hood. Brian Joyner, 81% free throw shooter in the state tournament. Nine of 11. One for one tonight. They get two for two for Brian, the senior. Three-year starter for Tom DeStefano. Along with Billy Johnson. Rodney Reeves also has played an awful lot of basketball at Claymont. The joiner gets two. 48-45. 340. Kenny. He's done a nice job for CR bringing the ball up. Won't hear his name mentioned too much, but very consistent. Hood, rejected by Jennings. Stevenson, no. Big battle underneath. Should have been knocked out of bounds by CR. Hood and Nick John right. both collided. And I'm really impressed with the way CR is breaking the press. They're coming down the floor. Kenny's coming to his nice hot stop. Bounce passing it to the middle. And then Yard Burst is simply turning and looking down the floor. Both clubs with two timeouts and Monday. We haven't seen much of Al Bucci, and he really was one of the factors of keeping Claymont in the game early on. He banged the offensive boards and got a couple of big buckets. And I know that uh, Tom's a little bit concerned about Monday's ball handling, and I would think right now they want a little bit better ball handling in there. Yarbrough. Nick Johns. 3.03 left. Hood. Count that one. CR's MVP of the game, no matter how this thing turns out. You know, Joe, I haven't seen a better point guard upstate than this young man is. No, I haven't. Joiner forced it. Rodney Reeves battling, and it'll go off to CR. And I'd have to agree to I'd even have to throw Brian Joiner and a couple of the other guys we've had earlier in the year in there with him. He can do an awful lot. He, he rebounds well. He plays.
plays good defense. He can play inside. He can play outside. Sean White can't get it. Reeves there, and Nick Johns comes down with a rebound. Up court. Yarbrough going on his own. Oh, foul and a pumpkin. Wow. Foul on Sean White. Yarbrough, ever since he came off the bench, Joe, he has excited he has really done club. the job coming off of that bench. And that right there is a big, big bucket right there. Check the scoring at 5.51. Claremont had their first lead to throwing the first quarter at 42-40. And now Cesar Rodney has gone up 52-45. So it's a 12-3 run in favor of Cesar Rodney. We have an opportunity. We there's a chance here for an eight-point differential, Steve, with 2.28 left. And once again, I have to repeat that Howie Yarbrough has been the key. Since his return to the game, the Riders have really turned on. And we're seeing that disciplined style. The point Joe made about the way they're handling the, the claim on pressure is well taken because they're ending up with opportunities at the other end that are to their advantage. Three on two, two on one, or whatever, and they're cashing in. I wouldn't be, be surprised to see Marshall Thomas kids take a little bit of the air out of the ball right now, Andrew. I would agree with that with uh, two and a quarter left about and uh, what might be an eight-point lead. They're going to start being very, very selective for the shots they take. And they can, uh, since they've been shooting fouls a little bit better over the past quarter, they can take a chance by uh, running down, let's say, 30 or 40 seconds. I guess a lot of it's going to depend on what Claymont does in this next possession down the floor. If Claymont scores, I don't think they're going to be able to be deliberate. But if they can stop Claymont from scoring and have that eight-point lead or seven-point lead, I think they're going to be able to afford to take some air out of it. Cesar Rodney with a Cinderella season. They have dedicated the year to Brian Glass, their honorary team captain who passed away earlier in the year. And the Riders have won 19 straight games. Right now it's 21 and 3. Next trip down the floor is a big one for Claymont, obviously, but they're going to have to be a lot more patient than they've been the, the past few trips down the floor. They haven't been very selective in their shot taking. It would be good to see Brian Joyner just get the ball and let's see if he can make one of his patented post-up moves. Here's Harold Yarbrough on the free throw line. First time tonight. 